and I'd uh, found a lump under my uh, left arm, which uh, felt like a, a, a mislocated muscle. So I uh, dutifully went to the doctor, got it checked out, thinking it was nothing, probably just a muscle spasm. And uh, my doctor was uh, very good at uh, identifying that there was possibly a, a risk there. Poked and prodded and scanned. I'm not a big fan of needles, so I got closely associated with a lot of needles, which wasn't a lot of fun. Um, and then was diagnosed, it actually came at Easter, going into the Easter holiday, I got a phone call to say, uh, can you come on in, we've got your test results and can you bring somebody with you? Uh, the initial uh, treatment I had was the um, MAB theorem. They've, the, the treatments have all got horrific names. <laughs> MAB theorem was the main drug. I can't actually remember um, the actual treatment name. It was something like Rock C or something bizarre like that, um, which was over about four and a half months. Um, going in for a day's chemotherapy at the um, Auckland uh, Hospital um, Cancer and Blood Centre day stay. The treatment was successful, went into remission. I think my last treatment was actually um, Daffodil Day 2005, which kind of stuck in the memory. Um, and was clear then for about 18 months, um, progressed well, uh, had a, a family holiday down to Spain, which was, was fantastic um, with the kids. And um, when I came back, I w had my checkup with my specialist, and uh, he was a bit concerned about some of my blood readings and sent me away for uh, another scan, another bone marrow biopsy, which are uh, uh, not a lot of fun. And um, yeah, unfortunately, in the February 2007, um, I got the uh, unpleasant news that it had returned. And really the, uh, the option then was to have a stem cell transplant. It's a, a slightly surreal process as, the, as you watch your, they effectively kill all your cells, <laughs> um, your, your white blood cells, um, take you down to zero when you're neutropenic. And then um, you wait <laughs> for them to regenerate following the transplant. No, so I, I guess I'm out, I hope, the other end. Um, it's been a journey of uh, uh, quite a bit of discovery. Um, the family have been absolutely sensational. My kids uh, to this day don't uh, explicitly know that I, I had a cancer of, of any sort. And uh, I guess part of this process is me fronting up to them and just letting them know that, you know, Dad when he had no hair. It wasn't a style statement. Um, it was uh, actually an illness that he's hopefully uh, seeing the back of. Um, adults are, are different. Um, I was fortunate enough that my wife Sarah was uh, an excellent gatekeeper and um, she surrounded me with positive people. Um, and the ones that struggled with it and, and a lot of people do struggle with it, um, were, were kept informed, but probably kept a little bit at arm's length. Um, and, and that worked really well for us. From a personal level, you, you do live your life on this uh, conveyor belt that never seems to end and has any number of um, challenges along the way. And you tend to live your life in short bursts it never goes far away. Um, even now where I'm on six month checkups, I'm still, I still have the same tensioning of the um, gut as I sit waiting to see my specialist. Um, and then you have this, uh, just this rush of adrenaline as you walk out. It's interesting, everybody going in looks like they're going to a funeral and everybody walking out looks like going to a party. Um, and that's just part of the process. Um, the, I guess the positive of that is that you get a reaffirmation every you know, three months, four months, six months, 12 months that you know, things are okay and 
box on. I think one of the key things I learned out of this process is you can't change what you have. You can do something about it though. And hiding from it, avoiding it, isn't going to help you to fix it. And knowing what you're facing is, is the first step um, to doing something about it. And you know, the treatment I had was outstanding. I don't know how it could be any better. Um, I'm sure there are places that have shinier kit, possibly, I don't know. I mean, everything I needed, I, I was given. Um, I, the care I received was, was outstanding. I mean, and the people, I don't know how they do it for a living, to be honest. I would, uh, I'd struggle to do it. Yeah, living with people who have, you know, life-changing um, issues, yeah, incredible. So no, it's, it's been a journey. I'd like to say it's been a blast. That would be an overstatement. But it's been a journey. I started out with um, small lumps in my groin, which um, it just seemed to be like little swollen lymph nodes. And yeah, I've always had um, lymph nodes down there that you could feel, which all my life, so um, I just thought they were just a little bit more bigger than usual, but sometimes you get um, infections and they can go up, uh, come up and go down a wee bit, so I wasn't too worried. But it was more when they just kept getting bigger, and so I showed them to the doctor, and they weren't too concerned about them. But um, sort of six months later they were bigger than that, probably twice the size they were originally. And uh, so, yeah, so I thought I'd go back and show them again. And that's when they said, yeah, it didn't look normal. Um, refer me to a, a surgeon. And, um, yeah, I mean, I didn't really understand at all about it. You know, I thought if you took these lymph nodes out, the ones that you could feel, that would be the end of it. I mean, it was problem solved, but um, yeah, it was a systematic disease, as he explained it, so yeah, it wasn't going to be quite as easy as that. Yeah, it was just a crazy time, really. Not mm. sort of understanding what you've got and not knowing where you go from here and, and waiting and waiting, but yeah, it was a bit crazy. You didn't know whether you are going to die in two, in two months or <laughs> mm. Awful, awful lot of emotions and feelings go through your head, but um, yeah, I guess for me it was all about just getting information at that stage and wanting to hit it and hit it, you know, get some sort of treatment underway, but nothing happened, you know, you're sort of waiting for doctors and waiting for appointments and waiting, you know, that's the, the hardest part, you know, but I guess down, finding out information just coming, um, you know, getting a full understanding of what you've got and what the way forward is with it is the, is the Thing that I found the easiest way to deal with, or deal with it. So um, that's what I did. Of course, with the wealth of information available on the internet, not always the best because um, you, you can take bits of information which can point in directions that are not necessarily relevant, you know, and, and you can get um, a little bit led astray by that. Yeah, so for me, it was the low grade follicular lymphoma, which, um, which after seeing the oncologist in the public health system for the first time, um, yeah, I still my understanding was still pretty limited, and I was expecting a, a pretty direct um, treatment plan, you know, ASAP sort of thing, and then to walk away having been told that no, we're gonna, not going to do anything at this stage. It's, the disease is not problematic for you, and um, we're going to adopt a watch and wait, wait and watch approach. You know, it just didn't sit with me well at all. It was, in fact, I was just blown away by it. You know, I thought if I've got, you know, disease happening, then surely you don't wait for it to get worse. You know, you surely it's better off to put the fire out in the shed before it spreads to the house sort of thing, you know. And saw a doctor in Palmerston North, privately, and he was really, really good in the way he sort of just shed it from another perspective more than anything. I'm not saying he was better or worse from the doctor I'd seen previously, I was just getting a, someone else's take on it and someone else's opinion, which um, I went away from that feeling a lot more positive. Yeah, eventually it came to the stage where, where um, after having 
just the, I think it was a two or four monthly um, treatment follow-up, saw so just consultations with the doctor in Wellington. Um, yeah, the lymphoma got to the stage where it was, um, it had spread to the bone marrow, it was, you know, it was in the um, lymph nodes above and below the diaphragm, which is important in, you know, in terms of staging. And the ones in the, in the groin had got quite big and were causing pain, and so it was decided then that treatment was appropriate. So hard to know what to expect because it affects people so differently, you know, and that's probably the best mentality to take in there is to see how it, it affects you know, yourself as an individual. Um, what I did go in there thinking is that if you get car sick, you do get affected worse by chemo. <laughs> Unfortunately, I get terrible car sickness. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but it wasn't, it, probably fair to say it wasn't as bad as, as it could have been, you know. Um, first, I found the first three days was um, was the worst. Um, it probably felt like you got poisoned, you know, which probably you did. Um, and you just felt really, really, uh, yeah, it just felt really achy, nauseous. Um, you know, I just found like, my legs shook, you know, and you couldn't couldn't stop them shaking. You'd, you'd want to lie down, you couldn't get comfortable there, you'd want to stand up, you couldn't get comfortable. You, mm -hmm. So you just, you'd just exist for about three days and all of a sudden you'd feel like you were coming right again, you know, you'd feel like all of a sudden you felt like eating something and um, the smell of food all of a sudden had a little bit of appeal again. And, yeah, but coming out of the treatment was, um, you know, just keeping focused on that end thing, you know, counting down your each one at a time. Um, a couple were delayed because of the, um, you know, the old neutrophil count was not bouncing back like it needed to, so they delayed treatment for a week. Which, when, when, you, when you get it into your head, it always um, was, well, for me, it was very important to have those three weeks ticking down because it was a countdown. You know, you just wanted to tick each one off the calendar, and when you had a delay, it was, um, you know, that that program was interrupted and, through a, and you didn't know how long this thing was going to keep rolling on for, you know, so that was a bit frustrating. One thing that I found was on treatment day I'd go into the hospital with my newly purchased iPod and all my crappy music that the kids had put on there for me. And, um, and so I'd sit there in the chair, hooked up with the iPod, and that was predominantly only the place I used the iPod was while I had chemo. And after about three infusions, every time I looked at my iPod, I felt sick. Um, I think it was, it might have been three weeks, we had the next CT scan after the last infusion, I think it was. And um, yeah, that came back all, all clear. And then I had another bone marrow test, and that came back clear as well. So. Yeah, that feeling was pretty special, you know, pretty, you know, like a feeling of, um, you know, everything you've gone through has been worth it, and um, you're working, walking out of there almost like, you know, you can kiss a goodbye forever because you're, you're out of there and gone, you know, ready to take on, take on the world again. Eleven months since chemo finished, and uh, yeah, we're getting a little bit of stuff coming back, you know, a little bit of groin node recovery <laughs> but, but um, that's all to be expected you know it's um, it's 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 a, a disease that takes a slow as they say in, indolent is it indolent um, process so as my doctor said in the last visit he says this, I'm, I'm at where he'd expect me to be at you know and um, but um, there's nothing that's troubling me, but you know, I guess it's a reminder that you know it's, it's the journey that you're on, and that's where you're going to end up is down the track is getting some form of treatment again. But you know, it could be worse, it could be a whole lot worse. So. Um, <laughs>